And before I even introduce the uh, today's session, I would like to ask Father uh, Abraham uh, to to begin with a prayer, to lead us in the prayer. Thank you, Shnora Galing, Sili Derhai. Good evening, everyone. Let us pray our thing. Ortnial der Merisus Christos, Amen. Hair mer vorergina se sur pierician unco. Yegesi arcaiut unco, yeritin gamco, vorbes ergina se vergri. The sats mer hanapas or turmes I sol, yev tolmes as pardis mer, vorbes ye make to unc merot pardabanats, ye me danirus mezi fortutium, ail pergias mezi charen, zique arcaiut un yev zorutun yev par, cavidianus, amen. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we are here together virtually to remember your name through the sacred music of the Armenian Church and to receive the wisdom and understanding through the holy music of our beloved Church. We are grateful for all the opportunities to be together this, this evening. We glorify you with the Father, with the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. And good evening again. Uh, I am Father Hovan. I am uh, the pastor of St. James Armenian Church, uh, St. James of Nisibis Armenian Church in Evanston. And I am also a chairman of the Sacred Music Council. And uh, today we have our uh, inaugural uh, live session, uh, which is a collaboration between Vemkar and Sacred Music Council. And uh, uh, we we will be presenting two, possibly four live sessions in this new uh, module, not new already for a couple of weeks, it's going new module, Christ as Hope. And during our sessions, we will be exploring uh, some sharagans uh, that uh, have either the word uh, hope or somehow this idea of hope is reflected in those sharagans. And the structure of our uh, live session is um, first we will hear the actual sharakan that we choose for. We will have one sharakan for each um, for each session. And first you will hear that sharakan. Uh, uh, some someone will sing that for us, and then another person uh, will uh, go through the lyrics, uh, go through the uh, the poetry, to, through the words, and 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 uh, help us to reflect how uh, this idea of hope. Uh, is, is presented here by the author of Sharagan. And then will be uh, the, uh, uh, the workshop part when uh, Hyde Mamikon will lead, uh, will teach us that Sharagan. We choose some Sharagans that we often uh, sing in the, uh, in the church. So this will, will be also helpful for all of us to, to learn something new or to, to master something we already know. So today's presenters are uh, Father Abraham uh, Malhasian, the pastor of Holy Martyrs Armenian Church in Bayside, uh, New York. Uh, Father Abraham is a graduate of uh, Givorkian Theological Seminary. And Father Abraham uh, first will uh, present with his wonderful voice uh, the Sharagan itself. We will hear how it, it, it sounds. And then after that, uh, Father Avedis Kalajan, who is the pastor of uh, St. Uh, Metro of Armenian Church in Racine, uh, Wisconsin, who is a graduate of St. Nurses Armenian Seminary, will we'll, uh, go through the lyrics and help us, uh, as I said, to, to, to understand uh, how this uh, idea uh, is reflected here. And, and then after that, uh, Father Mamikon, who is a um, uh, diocesan instructor of, of music, uh, uh, this is a new position, relatively new position. We, we have this position for the first time in our diocese. And, and Father uh, uh, Father Mamikon's job is to teach music. That's what he does uh, uh, all day during the week, uh, whether in person or uh, through the Zoom. And I encourage all of you who, who need any help with music uh, to contact either me or Father Mamikon and sign up for lessons. Uh, and it can be a one-on-one -on -one lesson through through Zoom also. And uh, the the uh, the big part of our live session will be that uh, workshop when uh, Father Mamikon will instruct you what to do with your microphones, and then we'll we'll sing. And hopefully by the end of the session, we will learn 
uh, new new uh, Sharagan. For, so for today, Sharagan, I uh, will send it now through uh, the chat. Uh, it's um, Joshua Sharagan, midday Sharagan, or uh, Nutuni uh, Bartsons, right? I did I have to check. Or Nutuni Bartsons, Benken, Ton for Sharagan. That we sing during uh, uh, during the liturgy whenever uh, the the tone of the day is tone four. Uh, so I would like now to ask uh, Father Abraham to to present uh, this sharagam, please. Did I? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Terhaj. And Teravetis, uh, please unmute yourself and. Yes, hi. How's everybody doing? Thank you, uh, Derhovan, for uh, organizing um, this part of the module and for uh, inviting us to, to share. Uh, as it was mentioned, uh, we are now uh, looking at the mode for Joshua Sharagan. Or Nutuni Partsunis, translating to uh, a blessing in the highest or praise uh, be on high. Um, I will go ahead and put in the chat um, the lyrics. Did that come through? Yeah, can you share them? I'll. I'll... Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, on the surface of it, it's 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 a very uh, straightforward um, shatagan. I'll read it. I'll read it for you. You can read along in the in the chat as well. Praise be on high to our King, born of the Virgin by the Father's will. Praise be on high to our hope, unshakable and steadfast. Praise be on high to the Holy Trinity, undivided and ever one. So just on first reading, we can uh, immediately recognize that there's uh, quite a bit of theology uh, going on here. Uh, we have words and phrases like born of the virgin, father's will, 
hope that is unshakable and steadfast and an undivided and ever one trinity. And of course, we can spend uh, hours and hours on any one of those um, words or, or phrases. Of course, today our focus is the hope part, which comes in the second uh, sentence uh, of this Sharagan, praise be on high to our hope, unshakable and steadfast. So I'm going to give you a little um, hint about how to decode this Sharagan and, and other Sharagans too, actually. Um, For those of us who, uh, we always have to remember, of course, that our church fathers who wrote um, these words uh, lived and breathed scripture. Not only scripture, but the writings of the early church fathers uh, in addition to that. So when we see theology, we recognize it as, um, as such. And when we see words and phrases that uh, may not necessarily look like theological concepts. Like, for example, Holy Trinity is not specifically uh, mentioned in the Bible as such, but the church developed that concept through, um, through their understanding of the Bible. Um, and then there are other phrases in here that we have to kind of wonder, why did the Sharagan writer use these words and these phrases. So if we look at the second sentence, praise be on high to our hope unshakable and steadfast, for those of us who aren't, um, you know, reading scripture day and night, um, every day, all day, like our uh, church fathers were, it, uh, it may not immediately be obvious that this phrase, unshakable and steadfast hope, is right out of the Bible. Of course, it comes as no surprise to us that this would be the case because we know how our Sharagans are off, always inspired by the Bible, unless they're talking about a historical event, you know, after the Bible was written. So it's either about the Bible or actual phrases directly quoted from the Bible. And this is what we have here in this second sentence. And believe me, I am not a biblical expert. When I first read this in English, this verse that I had read before uh, did not immediately pop out to me. Um, so I had to look it up. And the reason why I'm telling you that is because we, all of us can look it up. And it just takes a few minutes to kind of look at the sentence and how it's phrased and to get... Um, you know, get a good idea of how to search for this. This one happened to be particularly easy. All I did was in, set up a Google search. I didn't even have to go to a Bible website or anything. I just typed in unshakable, steadfast hope, Bible. And I immediately came up with Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18 through 20. Now, again, this is something that I had read before, but I'm not one to have, uh, you know, to, to, I'm not, my strong suit is not memorization. So um, I don't memorize Bible verses. Maybe some of you guys do. I, that's great if you, can, if you can do that, but my brain doesn't work that way, unfortunately. Um, but so what I came up with is Hebrews um, 6, 18 through 20. And I'll uh, copy and paste this as well in the message here so you can look at this text for yourself. In the same way, when God desired to show even more clearly to the heirs of the promise the unchangeable character of his purpose, he guaranteed it by an oath. So that through two unchangeable things in which it is impossible that God would prove false, we who have taken refuge might be strongly encouraged to seize the hope set before us. We have this hope, a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope that enters the inner shrine behind the curtain 
where Jesus, a forerunner on our behalf, has entered, having become a high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Now, you might say to yourself, Deadhide, where did you find um, unshakable and steadfast? Well, uh, this is where the problem of, you know, taking a kurapar sharagan, translating into English, then searching on the internet through countless versions uh, of the Bible, right? Of course, that was done automatically for me. I didn't have to go through many things. But it, it takes a little bit of practice. But once you get kind of the idea of how to search for these types of things, you can take you pretty much any sharagan and go a little deeper uh, into it besides what it, you know, what it means on the surface. Now, why am I going through all of this? Well, because to, to truly understand hope in the Christian context, we have to distinguish hope, the word hope for Christians from how we might use the word hope in our daily lives. Here's what I mean by that. If you were to say, I hope I win the lottery someday, um, that would be a correct and acceptable way of using the word hope um, in the way that it's commonly used. You could say, I hope I don't get a parking ticket, right? Like you, maybe you got held up at a meeting and you have to, you're late to your car. You might say to yourself, oh, I hope I don't get a parking ticket. Or you can say if you're going somewhere and there's traffic or whatever, you could say, oh, I hope we get there in time, right? We hope we get there on time. I have an appointment. This is kind of how we use the word hope, but it's not at all the way Christians would use the word hope because what, uh, for Christians, hope is tied in to confidence. It's a confident expectation that X, Y, and Z, something is going to happen. So you can't really say in the Christian sense, I hope I win the lottery, because none of us could have a confident expectation of winning the lottery, right? Uh, that's just not, it's not a reasonable thing to say, and it would be an improper use of the word hope. So as Christians, we kind of have to reorient our mind a little bit and understand that hope has a lot to do with confidence. Now, the reason why I bring up this Bible verse is because this few sentences, this two or three sentences, is filled with stuff that is pointing to confidence. If we look at the verse again, the unchangeable character of his purpose, we could have confidence in that. Guaranteed by an oath, we could have confidence in that. Impossible that God would prove false, or in some translations would say impossible that God would lie. We can have confidence in that. Um, anchor, anchor of the soul. I mean, if you don't have confidence you're an anchor, then you're probably on the wrong boat, right? And Christ as forerunner. So Christ has already kind of led the way, and we can have confidence in that as well, of course, because Christ is a savior, Christ has led the way. So in almost every respect, in every other, in every other phrase of this two or three verses, three or four verses, we have this, um, um, how should I say, redoubling or emphasis on the confidence that we should have in God's promise. And this is for me, fundamentally, what hope, what Christian hope is all about, this confidence, this confident expectation that God is going to be true to his word, and as a result, that we could be confident in salvation through him. Now, So in addition to kind of giving you the end result, which is this is, I would say it's more than likely 
that the person who wrote this Sharagan is referencing this Bible passage, number one. So I didn't just want to give you the, the end result of how I got there, but I also wanted to tell you a little bit about the process in which I got there. Because like I said, I'm not a, I'm not a Bible scholar and uh, not good at memorization. Um, so yeah, just by searching that one phrase, I was able to uh, come up with these uh, few verses and it fits in perfectly to what this Sharagan is all about. And the last thing I want to say about this Sharagan is that, you know, the translation uh, is what it is. And the in, when you read the, the Kurapar, um, it's kind of in the second sentence there, it says, praise be on high to our hope, unshakable and steadfast. You know, that hope can, can also be, uh, could be read as Christ himself, or it could be the hope of our salvation, which is unshakable and steadfast. In, in either case, it works. Now, I'm sure they probably meant it in, in, in both uh, meanings, both readings of that. So again, this is a very simple sharagan, or seemingly simple, but has deep uh, theological meaning, deep meaning rooted in um, scripture. And in this case, it wasn't particularly uh, difficult to find uh, what verse um, they were referencing. So I encourage all of you to, when you, uh, any kind of prayer, litany, um, uh, charagan, or any hymn that you may encounter, you, if, when you see a phrase, you should always ask yourself, why did the Sharagan author write it this way? Let me dig a little deeper. Let me investigate. Nine times out of ten, if not more, you will find that that phrase is directly from a Bible and it will, from the Bible, and it will enhance uh, your understanding of that Sharagan as it did today. Thank you. Oh, and if there are, uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, I'm happy to answer them. Uh, yes. Ruth Ann? Yes. Um, I was wondering where we could find English translations for the Joshua hymns. I have it for the, you know, the whole Badarak, but um, to be able to do what you just did, um, is there any place that has the translations for these hymns, the, the just the Joshua hymns. Oh, right. Um, I, I may not be up on the latest um, resources for where the translations are, but I can tell you where I usually go is Fa Father Arshan Ivazian's Divine Liturgy translation. He has the introits, the, the Alleluias, the Gospel Alleluias, the Joshua Sharagans, he has it in an appendix uh, in the back. I think also Tidan Surbazan's book, um, Badarak book, also has the same. But there might be like easier, those are just texts that I happen to have. There, uh, Father Hofan might know of stuff online that's more accessible. Yes, if you receive our uh, e newsletter that we send monthly uh, with the variables for every Sunday, uh, for Joshua Sharakan, we have uh, the music score, we have translation, and we have audio recording. And those translations, we use uh, Bishop Daniel's translations for that. Okay. Thank you. I do get those. Yeah, so translations. I didn't there. realize the translations were there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. well, there are these. I have a question. Where can one procure this Der Archen's translation of the Badarak? Oh, where did I get? I think I got mine on eBay. <laughs> uh, I'm not. Yeah, you could ask Father Arshen. Um, that's. <laughs> I can. I'm sure I can do that. That's fine. Thank you. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you, Teravetis. I know that Teravetis will not stay with us until the end of this uh, session, but thank you very much, Teravet. Thank you. And 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 we'll continue. And we'll move into the next uh, uh, section of, of our uh, presentation, uh, the learning session. We will uh, learn this Patarak. 
But before, before uh, I'll ask Father Mami going to start uh, his training, uh, I, I would like to ask Father Abraham one more time to sing, uh, to sing one more time this Sharagam for us. But then I, I will ask you to sing this a little slower because oh. now we have the score in front of us mm -hmm. and we can catch all the mistakes. I know it's just, it's, <laughs> we, 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 we can follow <laughs> that's the only reason <laughs> yeah uh, I, I, I uh, shared the link for the Sharagan in the uh, in the chat and if you think that it, it's uh, beneficial to share it on the screen I can do that too uh, just simply let me know but I'm sure you, you're uh, able to uh, to retrieve that Sharagan and, and have the score in front of you. So Ted Haish, uh, please. Thank you. Just, just a bit slower. Let's do it again. Ted, <laughs> uh, is it possible to share it so that yes, one, one we can second. follow? So Ted Haish, in that case, one second, let me Thank you. share it and share the screen. We can see it, right? Okay. Yeah.